All right, well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Vineyard Church of God in Central Florida. If you're tuning in on the YouTube video, please give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment. Let us know how many people are watching. If you have any uh, testimonies, any prayer requests, let us know because we pray for them. Uh, if you want to go to our website, www.thevineyardcog.com, go to our contact us page and it goes directly to our email and we can respond to you and you can give us our testimonies or, or a prayer request if you don't want them known and we'll pray for them. All right, let's go ahead and get, get uh, started in prayer. So Father God, we thank you for bringing us into your house today. For giving us your word, Father God. And I pray today that it is your word that comes out of my mouth and not my own. So that others can understand and hear your word and move closer to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now today, we're going to discuss a topic that I don't know has grown pretty lax nowadays. You know, in, in our day and time. And it's about crosses. And I had a little story that, that I wanted to share. And that is about the man who bore, the, bore the, his cross. And it was heavy. It was a heavy laden cross. And so I have a little cross for you. <laughs> okay. So. The man is carrying his cross in. And he's just struggling. He's struggling. He brings his cross up. And he says... Lord, I wish I could just get rid of this cross. You know, I'm tired of carrying it. It weighs so much. It's so heavy. You know, and it's just bearing me down. He says, I can't take it anymore. And so the Lord had spoke to the man. And he says, I'll tell you what. He says, I'm going to do something for you that I, I normally don't do. He says, I'm going to give you a choice to trade in your cross for one that you like. One that you want that's going to fit you. And so, all of a sudden, a door appears. And the Lord told him, he says, go through the door, put down your cross, and you can pick and choose from any cross in the room. It's yours, you know, but when you get it, it's yours, and you have to keep it. He says, oh, that sounds great. I'll do that. And so, he walks through the door, and he puts down his cross. And then he looks around the room. It's a big room, massive room. You can't even see the, the roof. It's just open. And it's all white. And he sees these crosses all over the place of different sizes and shapes. They're all just, you know, from the very smallest to the very largest. And he's walking around the room and he's choosing. He says, oh, maybe, maybe that one? No. Goes around. And it's, like, it's a kid in a candy store. There's just so much to choose from. And so he walks to the back of the room and he looks up and he's just looking and looking and looking. There's this huge cross. And he says, oh, no, definitely not. I, I don't want that one because it'd be too big. And so he goes around and he's looking at all these other ones. And he turns around and he sees this, this cross sitting back by the door. It's real small, real small cross compared to everything else in the room. And so he says, I want this one and the Lord speaks up and he says are you sure that's the one that you want and he says oh yeah this is the one that I want he goes I mean come on I want this one and God says okay he says but he says you know that's the cross that you just came in with okay after looking at what everyone else had his wasn't so heavy after all his wasn't so big, and definitely he didn't want the cross at the other end because that was the biggest cross. And we all know whose cross that was. Amen? So we're going to read out of Matthew chapter 16 today. I know I didn't give you my, my scriptures, so bear with me on this. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, if you want to pop it up real quick. This is where Jesus declares his expectation that his followers would follow him by dying to themselves. Okay, you got to die to self in order to follow Jesus. A lot of people in the world read stuff like this 
And it's like, mm, well, how do you do that? Because how do I live when I'm dead? Okay, you want us to follow this guy and die. Okay, that's a scary thing to the world, especially when you're trying to bring in new people, you know, that don't know Jesus, and you want them to know Jesus. You want them to follow Jesus. You want them to have a better life. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, and you can just stay on that, and we'll just go down the line. But this is what it says. Then Jesus said to his disciples, okay, he's talking to his disciples, and you got to listen to it carefully, this whole thing here, because this is leading up to a paradox. It's what people don't really understand about carrying a cross. He says, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right? Now, when they're following him, he says, If anyone desires to come after me, that's to follow him, because... If you're coming after somebody, it means that they went before. So you're following. Okay, so follow me on this. Let himself deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The word spoken to the disciples of Jesus, to those who gen genuinely, not just somebody who wanted to say, I'm going to follow you and, and feel good for the moment, but those who genuinely want to follow Jesus. That's who he was talking to, or to come after him. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. It was bad enough for the, for the disciples to hear about what Jesus would be, you know, he'd be suffering, he'd be rejected, he'd die at the cross. Now Jesus told them they must go ahead and also die, okay? If you're following Jesus, Jesus is following the road to the cross, now, you've got to understand that this is before Jesus was sacrificed on the cross. The crosses had a totally different meaning back then. There was only one thing for the cross, one purpose, and that was execution. That is when they took a life. It, when you say, when you're going on the cross, that's the end. It's it. Because you're going to die there, and that's it. All right? So through the disciples' minds... Okay, you want us to take up our cross and walk with you, okay? It's like walking down death row, okay? You know you're going to die. From day to day, you know, okay? I'm go walking down the hallway, and I'm going towards the execution chamber, you know? Is that a good feeling to have? Especially for new Christians when they want to know about carrying a cross, walking with Jesus, Okay, walk with Jesus daily, right? They didn't like that. Let him dis deny the design, uh, excuse me, deny himself and take up his cross. It was bad enough to know what's going to happen to Jesus because they heard about it. This is why Jesus is here. And now you want us to go along and, and do it too. Now, what is, what is it to suffer? Okay? There's a lot of suffering going on in the world. We hear that all the time. We suffer. They suffer. The world suffers. Christians suffer. But there's difference between what Christians suffer and what the world suffers, okay? This is a part of the definition in Webster's Dictionary. It says, to feel or bear what is painful, disagreeable, or distressing, either to the body or mind, to undergo, okay? We suffer pain of body, we suffer grief of mind. The criminal suffers punishment. The sinner suffers the pains of conscience in his life and is condemned to suffer the wrath of an offended God. We often suffer wrong, we suffer abuse, and we suffer injustice. And that's in the dictionary. Okay? Christians suffer injustice. Okay? We suffer wrong. We suffer abuse through history even back then if you were a christian chances are you know you're either going to end up dead or hurt all right you're going to suffer in different ways when you deny yourself and take up the cross everybody knew what jesus meant all right the cross had only one purpose death 
as long as Jesus was walking on this earth up into that last final point where he changed history and changed the whole meaning, right? Because we don't think that way nowadays. In these 20 centuries after Jesus, we have done a pretty good job in sanitizing and ritualizing the cross. We've cleaned it all up. Now you see crosses on everybody. Believers, non-believers, just makes you feel good. Okay, it's a, it, it, it's a trinket to show, hey, I got a cross. I'm cool. It's good. But do you remember what the cross represented? Okay. Death. I wear death all the time. Okay. That's basically what it was before Jesus. What we're talking about right now in Matthew, this is it. Yet Jesus said something much like this. Walk down death road daily and follow me. Take up your cross wasn't a journey. It was a one-way trip. When you pick up your cross and you follow Jesus, it's not a round trip. You can't go back to the beginning. It's a one-way trip. Follow Jesus to the very end, okay? There was no returning ticket. There was never a round trip. Cross-bearing does not refer to some irritation in, you know, in life. Rather, it involves the way of the cross. The picture is of a man already condemned, required to car carry his cross on the way to the place of execution, as Jesus was required to do. That is the picture of the cross. That is what we see now as Christians. The world sees things differently. We see things as they are, because we know the life of Jesus. We believe the life of Jesus. We follow Jesus daily. I'm not trying to scare you about carrying the cross of Jesus, though. Because I don't want to do that. Because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. When you've got to deny yourself, though, denying self is not the same as self-denial. You can have a self-denial and deny yourself food, um, going out you know, to a movie, you know, entertainment. You can deny yourself things like this. But when it says denying self, okay, they're talking about the self-indulgence that the human nature wants. Okay, we want a lot of things in this world. We want to indulge ourselves in it. Give me millions of dollars. You know, I want to swim in the money. You know, a million dollars doesn't go far nowadays because the government takes most of it. So, <laughs> you know, if I want to win the lottery, I'm going to say, give me about 80 million. Okay, that way at least I know I've got a million dollars left over. Right? But it's self indulgence. We got to get rid of the self indulgent attitude. When we do that and we follow Jesus, we're going to be blessed with things. You know, I, I've seen, you know, ministers or other Christians, you know, they trips to Hawaii, you know, in these far off countries, you know, all bought and paid for, you know, blessed. They're blessed by somebody in some way to do all these things. So following Jesus does have perks. They have benefits. Okay. Yeah, it's unexpected. I don't expect to go anywhere, but if it ever happened, I'd probably, whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, you know. But it is to deny yourself to all these things that are in the world. And that's a tough thing to do. I would love a brand new car. Had, you know, Ken Pohl come up here with a brand new Dodge Charger, man. Did you see that? Woo! I'd love to have that. But, you know, I, I got one that runs and it gets me from here to there. So as long as God's blessed me with the vehicle that transports me and makes it get me there and back home safe, that's fine with me. I'd love a new car, but, you know, it's all in God's time. You know, it's not up to me. I'm not going to indulge myself. Oh, I finally got money in and I'm going to buy this thing. No. I got something that works. It's okay. I'll use that for something else. Denying self means to live as an, as an others-centered person. Okay? An other-centered person. Which means I'm not living for myself. I don't live for myself. I follow somebody. I follow Jesus. I live for him. 
I live for God. Okay? That is an other-centered person. And that's what it means to deny yourself. Okay? Jesus was the only person to do this perfectly. Now, you know why they say perfectly? Because who is he following? He was following God. He's the Son of God. He's got God going through him. Okay, so it was perfect. There was no flaws in it. So he was also an other-centered person, the other being God. We are an other-centered person, other being Jesus. All right, may not be perfect, but we're following perfection, right? So Jesus was the only one, the only person to do it perfectly. But we are to follow in his steps, and follow me is what he said. This is following Jesus at the simplest. He carried a cross. He walked down death row. So must those who follow him. Human nature wants us to indulge ourselves and not deny ourselves. Death to self is always terrible. So we don't have to physically... Okay. We're not doing that. It's death to nature. Human nature. It's man. It's, it's our one... Okay, sort of like temptation. Remember that? Jesus being tempted by the devil. All right, we're going to be tempted, yeah, but we got to be able to, nope, I don't want that for myself. No, I'm following somebody else and I'm going to get something much better than what you have to offer me. Because what you're offering me is the world. And you can't take the world with you when you go. Right? Especially if you don't have Jesus. So, Human nature wants to indulge self, not to deny self. Death to self is always terrible. And if we expect it to be pleasant or mild experience, we will often be delusioned. Death to self is the radical command of the Christian life. To take up your cross meant one thing, you were going to a certain death. Okay? So we know that. We know that we're going to die. We, we know that we're going to be, you know, laughed at, ridiculed, you know, sometimes killed. All right? Mortal man can kill you, but the soul belongs to God. That's where you're going to go. All right? It could be in an instant. One minute you're staring at a car coming at you head on. Next minute, pff, there's Jesus in your face. Right? Quick as that. So, in that, let's go to Matthew 16, verses 25 through 27. You got that, Margaret? This is the paradox of the cross, finding life by losing it. A paradox. You know what a paradox is? It says in the dictionary, paradox, a tenet or proposition contrary to received opinion or seemingly absurd, yet true in fact. You've got to be kidding me. Can that really be? But it's true, right? That's the, the, the mindset of people. It's absurd, totally absurd. How can that be? But it's true, and in fact, I've seen a couple of things on earth that are absurd, but it's true. <laughs> you can't explain it, all right? But here we are in Matthew 16, verses 25 through 27. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Okay, that's absurd. Okay, you're going to save your life and lose it if, if you try that? Hmm, but whoever loses his life for my sake, Jesus, will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. What a paradox. Okay, you mean I have to lose something to gain it? And gain something to lose it? What, what, what are you talking about? Okay, this is all a spiritual thing with Jesus. We can't look inside the natural like people do. The normal world is going to look at this and say, you're crazy. You know, it, it's meaningless. It means nothing. But yet it's true in fact. Right? It's like going head to head with a, you know, a philosopher or something, you know? <laughs> a psychoanalyst. 
But whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We must follow Jesus this way because it is the only way that we will ever find life. Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. He's the life, okay? He is the resurrection and the life. <laughs> right? You will never live until you first walk to your death with Jesus, but that is the idea. You can't gain resurrection without dying first. Okay? Did you get me so far? You have to die in order to be resurrected, in order to live. So that's Jesus saying you have to die to yourself. Die to self. Follow me and gain life. Let's take a seed. If you have any seed, I don't care what it is. The seed has to die. It has to die, be buried, covered up in order to live and grow the way that it's supposed to be. From the smallest plant, a weed, Bleed the grass. Who cares? This small thing to the giant trees. Okay? Whatever that seed is meant to be, it has to die, be buried, and then it'll grow into what it was meant to be. The same goes for us. We have to die first and then be resurrected into what we were meant to be. Amen? You got me so far? Almost there. Almost there. What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? I mean, that's self-explanatory to me, but the world will look at it and say, what? I don't care. You know, to them it's like nothing. But it's everything. It is everything to us because what happens after this is over? After our time on earth is done, okay, most of the world is sitting there saying, there's nothing afterwards. There's nothing afterwards. But for some reason, since they don't believe in God, they get angry at people that do believe in God when they don't believe it in themselves. So why be angry on something that you don't believe in? I don't know. Maybe they do believe. Because also, if you believe in the devil, you've got to believe in God because God created Satan. All right? So you have to believe in both. Avoiding the walk to death with Jesus means that we may gain the whole world. Okay? We can get everything. We just don't follow Jesus. We can get all our heart's desire and bring it all together and accumulate it into one big hoarding bunch. Okay, now I've got everything. I die. What happens to everything that I got? It's garbage. You have the scavengers come in and pick at it, take what they want, throw away the rest. It's not yours anymore. Okay? Whereas Christians know that if you hoard like that, it wasn't yours to begin with. All right? God gave it to you. He put it in charge of you. Okay? But you can't take what's on the world with you when you go. So... Avoiding the walk to death with Jesus means that we may gain the whole world and end up losing everything. Jesus himself had the opportunity to gain the world by worshiping Satan. In Luke 4, 5 through 8, you don't have to go there, Margaret. Luke 4, 5 through 8, with the temptation. Jesus was tempted by the devil and given, you know, offered everything, food, water, um, kingdoms. You know, everything he could see, you know, it, it would have been his. If he would have just gave up and bowed down, accepted Satan, you know, it would have had everything. But what does it profit someone to have everything and lose it all? You lose your soul. You lose your eternity. Because now you don't have a life after death unless it's in hell. Okay? Okay. I would rather have life eternal in heaven, living with Jesus and God and the angels and all the other saints that are up there, everybody that made it, to live with them eternally in peace, in joy where there's no suffering, no pain. I'd rather live there than, you know, flames and gnashing of teeth and yelling and screaming and ah, 
ah, you know, it would be like a, a massive wild rave party constantly for, the, for eternity, but without the happy rave, you know. <laughs> It'd just be nothing but loud noises constantly. Amazingly, the people who live this way before Jesus are the ones who are really genuinely happy. Giving our lives to Jesus all the way and living as an other-centered person does not take away from our lives, it adds to it. Because we still have what the world has to offer, what God puts in our possession, you know, He gives us charge of. We still have that, but we also have an added benefit of being in one of the biggest families ever, and that's the family of God. All the benefits, all the perks, knowing that when it's over, okay, I get to live eternally in heaven. My riches are up there. It's all been backed up, put away, it's being stored up there where no dust or moth or anything else can come in there and take it, take it over or rust, it will never rust. Is perfect and it's all ours right he will reward each according to his works I'll finish with this this ultimate gain is given on this day if we live life blind to this truth we really will lose our own soul he will reward each according to his works each works that we do what we respond to if we follow Jesus, we pick up our cross and we walk with him and walk with him daily, trust in him, we will benefit. Okay, we're not going to lose our souls to the earth. We're going to gain it in heaven. Carson wrote, not only Jesus' example, but the judgment he will exercise is an incentive to take up one's cross and follow him. I would rather take up the cross and follow Jesus than to walk with Satan on the earth. Because I know where you're going to end up when you walk with Satan on the earth. And it's not good. It may be eternal, but it's not good. I'd rather pick up that thing and walk with it and walk with Jesus for the rest of my life to the end. Because I know that when that time comes and boom, twinkling of an eye, I'm in heaven with Jesus. Saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. You get a little bit more on the crosses and the paradox of it, of what people read and they don't understand. Okay? That's why a lot of what's written inside God's Word is for Christians. It's for us to chew on, to understand, and then to talk to other people and bring them in. Okay, you want to know Jesus? You want to know what we understand? Come on, I'll show you. Right? Bring them into the fold. Bring them into the family. What can it hide? Right? Amen? Father God, we thank you for your word today. We praise you and we glorify you. These beautiful days that you've given us. The days of our lives, Father God. From birth to its end. We see you in every single day, in every single way. Our challenge today, Father God, is to look for all the positives, all the goods that you've given us in this world. To dwell on those, Father God, and not the stuff that is the evil and, and bringing us down and stealing our joy. But Father God, we always want to praise you. We always want to glorify you and worship you, Jesus. And thank you for the sacrifice on the cross. For you changed it from a death symbol to a symbol of hope, of resurrection, of our salvation. That's what we remember with the cross is all that you went through, all that the people that have the crosses backed up in the room of heaven all the crosses that, that were bore for us to reach other people, to increase your kingdom, Father God, and your understanding. 
I pray, Father God, today as we head out into the missions field, that you put people in our paths that need to hear a good word, that need to be lifted up. Those who couldn't make it here today, Father God, I pray that they watch the video, that they get something from it, that they can share with family and friends, co-workers. Father God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Protect us. Watch over us so that no evil comes against us. In Jesus' name, amen. And we shall see you next Sunday.